the Prophet ﷺ, his neighbor goes to work at night, they meet one another, and his neighbor takes from Umar the things that he took from the Prophet ﷺ. The next day, the opposite. His neighbor goes to the Prophet, collects what he hears from the Prophet ﷺ. Umar goes and seeks working for making, uh, making life for himself. And then when they meet at, at night, uh, <coughs> his neighbor will be giving him what he took from the Prophet ﷺ. It's very beautiful. Can this be seen with us someday? I wish. I wish. By the way, I have this one. Sometimes. I'm not... I'm, I'm saying it for you. Uh, that, inshallah, will be a good example to you. Sometimes, even if I want to go to the bathroom, I have the Bukhari, the whole Bukhari here. Voice by voice. I have the Quran. I put, you know, Bukhari, put the, the, this phone outside as if it's being heard by, you know, by outside. I won't even to get to take advantage of those moments. Because the knowledge doesn't give you some of it until you give it all of, all of you. It doesn't give you some of it until you give it all of you. You have to dedicate yourself. And today, people really, I'm not admiring the Muslims of their zuhud. They are very zahid today. You know the meaning of zahid? Ascetic? You know the meaning of zahid? Huh? Asceticism? Have you heard of the word zuhud? What's the meaning of zuhud? No one knows the meaning of the zuhud. Zuhud, no. Exactly. But the zuhud, the type of zuhud today is someone who's leaving knowledge. They have zuhud in knowledge, not zuhud of dunya. That's a problem with the Muslims today. Really. They have zuhud in dunya, in, in, in knowledge. They don't have zuhud in dunya. Once we stop that zuhud in knowledge, we'll be, inshallah, improving. Anyway. Umar became the Muslim, uh, became Muslim at the sixth year of the prophethood of Muhammad and he was 26 years old. The Prophet kept supplicating Allah, Oh Allah, honor Islam with one of those <coughs> closer among the two to you. Umar ibn Hisham or Umar ibn Khattab. Then Allah guided Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu <coughs> anhu. What, what happened with the Muslims with the moment Umar became Muslim? Muslims changed their attitude from secret converting to Islam to publicly announcing Islam, declaring Islam. As Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, we used to be humiliated until Umar became Muslim. We kept being humiliated until Umar became Muslim. He was strong in truth, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was se segregating, separating by him between the truth and the false. And he was very famous with this, not only by the Muslim. <coughs> until today, he's famous to be a just and a fair person by the non-Muslims. The Prophet said, Abu Bakr wa Umar, min hadha al-deen bi manzilat al-sam'i wal basari min al-raqs. Abu Bakr wa Umar, of this religion, they are just like, as the likeness of the sight and the hearing which are in the head. The value of Abu Bakr and Umar in religion, in, 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 in our matter of religion, is as the value of the hearing and the sight in the head. That shows the importance of Abu Bakr. He he was also teaching people aqidah. For example, when they had the Muslims had a famine after the Prophet's death, Umar said, "Oh Allah, we used to be asking you by you, Prophet, to grant us." you know, uh, rain, water. But now we ask you through his uncle Al-Abbas, and he ordered Al-Abbas to ask Allah and to make dua. So what does this mean? That when a person died, you don't speak to him. You don't address him. Finish, he died. 
unless if the Sharia allowed something, like for example saying to the Prophet, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, there's nothing wrong with that. As the Prophet used to be addressing the people of Al-Baqiyah, saying to them, Assalamu alaikum da raqawmi al-Mubini. That's allowed. And it is something similar that you say in your prayer, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, Assalamu alaikum wa ala ibadillah al-Salih. That is allowed. But to say, oh Prophet, make shafa for me, don't forget me, Prophet. Well, at the day of judgment, don't forget me. Remember me. My name is Shafa Satra. Remember me, make shafa for me. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating. There are people who do that. And you should not do it. Why? The Prophet died, Aisha. If you say that the Prophet can hear you at any moment, that means the Prophet has sort of divinity. He's not hearing you anymore. If, if some, you know, some people say, but, but by Allah's will, yeah, but show me where Allah willed you to speak to the dead. Tell me where. Because there are other people who say that the Imams, they can provide, give me risk provision by Allah's will. So if I accept you, you can accept them. No. So Amr was saying, oh Allah, we used to be asking you by your Prophet. What was it by your Prophet? They used to be going to the Prophet when they, when he was alive, saying to him, Oh Prophet, we have no more water, ask Allah for us. So there is nothing wrong with this. If I meet the brother or my brother there and I say to him, My brother made dua for me, there's nothing wrong with it. But to be in my house and I speak, What's your name, brother? I am in London and brother Abdullah in Pakistan. And he's a wali, mashallah. I say, Brother Abdullah, Brother Abdullah, please make dua for me. Can't be. Unless I speak to him through hand talk or Skype, yeah. <laughs> so there are means. There is a mean that you that you use. But without anything, just like for example, if if uh, it's normal that, that the doctor, for example, use the microscope, use the microscope, and by the microscope he can realize your type of uh, uh, child in in your wife's womb, whether he's male or female. There's nothing wrong with that. But imagine if you go to the doctor and the doctor did not use the microscope and he said, uh, you're, you, have a, you have a son, you have a male. You're not going to accept that from the doctor. Omar was the first one who used the Hijri era as the Islamic calendar. And he did not start with the birthday of the Prophet. No. Through the immigration of the Prophet. Because this is the greatest event when Muslims starting to immigrate from Kufr to Iman. That's the most important thing. He's the first one that uh, made a system, a system in the government, Dawawin. Dawawin, he made the, uh, how do you say it called, the Diwan in, in, in English? Structuring. <coughs> huh? Structuring? Yeah, structuring, you know, making, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to call it in uh, English. But anyway. Anyway, he organized. Departmental. Sorry? Parliament. Office. Not parliament. No, 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 not parliament. Office. Parliament. Departmental. Yeah, something like this. Right. You're right. <laughs> and he took the, he, he established the treasure house of the Muslims, Beit Mal al Muslimin. He's the one that uh, expanded the mosque of the Prophet. He's the one that uh, legalized or made the law. For Ahl al what's the of Ahl al Those who are under the word, promise of protection, I mean those who are non-Muslims, given a promise of protection by the Muslims. And he, uh, he uh, uh, accepted, not accepted, accepted, make exceptional, for the, for the children and women and all aged people, Jewish and Christians, from giving the jizya, the money, the money which is the, 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 the which is the price of the promise of profit. You give money, we protect you. We don't allow anyone to touch you or to harm you. Uh, Asham, the you know the, the, the countries of Asham, which is today Damascus, uh, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine, all of those countries were opened at his lifetime. They all converted to Islam. Also Iraq, and also the the fire of the Magans, fire worshippers, the Persians at that time. It was a 
extinguished by